Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a time for a point to ponder. I'd been studying uh, the book of in the book of really Romans chapter five and verse number one. Romans chapter five, verse number one and two. It'd be a two verses today. So I want to just pick out some things and really uh, we're going to study the word justification. That's the word today, justification, which means declared innocent, not guilty. Innocent, not guilty. That's good news, isn't it? I mean, it's good news if you're charged, <laughs> if you were charged with a crime or something. That's good news if you have been found not guilty, innocent. And we're going to talk about that in a spiritual sense that we're all condemned to die. Because we all are sinners. And so justification, verse number one, Romans 5, 1, therefore, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, what a great verse of scripture. Therefore, of course, goes back to the preceding verses. Therefore, for this reason, for, the, for the, what reason are we justified? For what reason are we justified? Well, let's go back to chapter 4. You go back to chapter 4, it talks about a very interesting character by the name of Abraham. Abraham, the father of faith. And, of course, we look at him in chapter 4. If you understand that the whole chapter talks about, it talks about him being the biological, uh, I guess, founder of Judaism or Jews or the nation of Israel. They claim him as their biological father. Well, you know, uh, when we look at that, we understand that. I understand that those Jews, and I love Israel, I really do, I, I love the Jews. And so, uh, but how can, how can I call him my father? I am a Gentile, and most of us are Gentiles, and so we can't call him Father Abraham, correct? Because we are not biologically from uh, his seed. And so the, the Jews say Father Abraham. And so, but when I read chapter four of Romans, I find out that I can, and so can you, we Gentiles can call him Father Abraham for this reason. For well, this reason that Abraham, of course, uh, the Jewish nation came from Abraham biologically, but then on this part, he's also the father of faith. It was counted unto him for righteousness, his faith. Now, uh, how am I related to Abraham? How can I claim Abraham as my father? How can you claim Abraham as your father? It's very simple. Are you saved? Do you have faith in Jesus Christ? Are you, uh, are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Well, if you are, <laughs> Abraham's your spiritual father. Because you see, Abraham was justified not by works, but by his faith, his faith in the future that the Messiah would come. Just as God gave him a son in his old old age, he was a hundred years old and, and, and Sarah was 90. Wow, a promised child. And so in the, he knew that Jesus Christ was going to come someday. The Messiah was going to come. That was his faith. You see, the, the, the Old Testament People had to have faith. They had to faith, have faith to look to the future that the Messiah would come, Jesus Christ. And we Christians today, we look back into the past and say, he has come. He has, hallelujah, glory to God, he has come. We believe that. So they look to the future, he was going to come. We look to the past, he has come. See, so Abraham's faith saved him, and my faith saved me by looking back into the past. His faith saved him by looking into the future. All right, therefore, that settles that word, being justified, being declared innocent. Being declared innocent, not guilty by what? Not by works. We got, we got some folks believe that the only way you can get to heaven is work your way in. And they, they have these, this works. That, that's not, that's not going to get you into heaven. Now listen to me. Works cannot get you into heaven. It's faith that gets you into heaven. Persuasion. Being totally persuaded. We have peace 
with God. Peace with God. My faith brings peace with God. So peace with God means I've got a, 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 a relationship with God. When you look at that, when you think about peace with God, it's interaction. It's association when you look at that. The peace of God, it's a source. So here I've got my source. My source of peace is from God, but it's my relationship with him. It's my faith in him. So when I put faith in, 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 in uh, justified uh, by faith, I've got peace with God. And, and th- the source is from, from, from who? Well, you find it in verse number one. God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the source of my peace. See, I got peace, this tranquil feeling. I, I got peace to thank God for the peace with God. That means the war is over, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, you see, it's hard for us to understand, but that we 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 recognize that human beings, all the human beings, as in, in natural state, are enemies to God. I was an enemy to God when I was lost. When I was not saved, I was an enemy of God. And, and I, had it, I inherited an evil nature. Adam passed it on to every human. And so I was an enemy of God, and you were an enemy of God. But through our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, now, ladies and gentlemen, we have peace with God. The war's over. <laughs> Hallelujah, it's over. And so thank God for that. The war is over. Me and God is on speaking terms now. Amen? We're on speaking terms. He's my father. I'm his son. He's your father. He's your son. Uh, you know, he's your, you're his son. You're his daughter. Uh, 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 and so likewise, uh, he's your father. So thank God for that. Thank God for therefore being justified, declared innocent by faith. We have peace with God. Wow, isn't that wonderful? The war is over. No more strife between me and God. Now, let's look at verse, uh, uh, look at, look, well, let me show you the difference. Actually, I'm going to move on here. I don't have a whole lot of time left. Uh, in, in Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. There's a difference between peace with God and peace of God. That's two prepositions in our grammar, with and of. Now, peace with God means the war is over. Peace of God means that we, there will be times in our struggles on, or in Christianity that we will need the peace of of God. It passes. It supersedes all understanding, all intellectual uh, understanding. It blows that away how that we can have peace. How can a martyr die in the face of the, the, the people that are killed them and look up and just say, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How, how did Stephen say that? Lord, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. That is That is peace of God. See, you get peace with God you get that when you get saved. You get the peace of God after you're saved, and you'll need it. Hallelujah. Now, Romans 5, 2, by whom also we have access by faith. We have entrance by faith into this grace. Grace is God's favor. God has done us such a wonderful favor. Grace Grace, not by the Mosaic law, but grace. So by whom, and uh, that course is Christ, that, that whom is Christ, and, and excess mean admission, and faith is persuasion, when you look at that verse, persuasion, and grace is a favor, and stand, firm, means fi- fixed and established, Hope, uh, rejoicing, hope, anticipating expectations of something, expecting heaven. Amen. Expecting heaven, expecting the glory of God. Thank God for these two verses, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a point to ponder. Verse 1 and verse 2 of Romans chapter 5. God bless you. And I hope you have peace with God. And I hope that you have the peace of God. And it's a joy to share with you today justification. We have been declared innocent, not guilty. And one day we'll live with our Lord forever. God bless you. And you have a wonderful day in the Lord.